1949 was an extraordinary year for China. The three-year-long civil war between the Communist Party and the Kuomintang finally ended. Following the conclusion of the celebrated Waihai and Beiping Tianjin campaigns, with the CPC's victory, Xinhua News Agency published a commentary. The Chinese people must liberate Taiwan. It contained the first ever mention of the phrase liberating Taiwan. Ah! 1949 was also the year when the People's Republic of China was founded. With the People's Liberation Army expanding its presence across China, liberating Taiwan became an obvious step. Yet, with tens of thousands of PLA soldiers poised to act, the operation was suddenly paused. Why? On November the 26th, 1943, the United States, the United Kingdom, and China signed the Cairo Declaration. It stated that, that all the territories Japan had stolen from the Chinese, such as Manchuria, Formosa, and the Pescadores, shall be restored to the Republic of China. Following the end of World War II in Europe, the US, UK, and China issued the Potsdam Proclamation in calling for Japan's surrender, it stressed that the terms of the Cairo Declaration must be executed. Taiwan has been an inalienable part of China since antiquity. Japan seized the island in 1895 Following the first Sino-Japanese War, Taiwan subsequently endured 50 years of colonial rule before finally being returned to China. There is a valid claim that Taiwan should be a part of China. But in general, I think the United States has recognized that there is uh, some substantial right of China to call it a part of China from its long, long history. However, no sooner was Taiwan returned to China than it once again became a focus of contention. On December the 10th, 1949, two months after the founding of the People's Republic of China, Chiang Kai-shek, leader of the Kuomintang, boarded a plane at Chengdu's Fung Huang Shan Airport, bound for Taiwan. The retreat by the Kuomintang regime marked the start of a long period of separation between the two sides of the Taiwan Strait. The United States, which had actively supported the Chiang Kai-shek regime, responded with a statement. For the past four years, the United States and other allied powers have accepted the exercise of Chinese authority over the island. The United States has no predatory designs on Formosa, or on any other Chinese territory. The United States has no desire to obtain special rights or privileges, or to establish military bases on Formosa at this time. Nor does it have any intention of utilizing its armed forces to interfere in the present situation. The United States government will not pursue a course which will lead to involvement in the civil conflict in China. The statement issued by the Truman administration on January the 5th, 1950, clearly recognized the PRC's sovereignty over Taiwan. On January the 12th, U.S. Secretary of State Dean Acheson gave a speech at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. In it, he suggested that Taiwan was outside of America's defensive perimeter. The 
介入中国解放台湾。Earlier, the CPC Central Committee had published the message to soldiers at the front and all compatriots in China. It explicitly identified as the major operational mission of 1950 to liberate Taiwan, Hainan Island, and Shizong, and realize China's reunification. The man appointed to take charge of the military operation in Taiwan was Su Yi, second in command and deputy political commissar of the Third Field Army, acting commander, political commissar. 当时主要让他们研究三个方面，第一呢，就是台湾可否在尽快的时间内攻克啊？那么第二就是如何攻克台湾？第三个呢，就是用什么办法来这个争取这个台湾的这个分化，台湾的敌军。However, on June the 25th, 1950, the international climate changed dramatically when the Korean War broke out. The U.S. government had previously declared that it no longer intended to defend Taiwan. Yet, on the day the Korean War began, Douglas MacArthur, head of the U.S. Far East Command, submitted a report outlining a strategy for containing communism in Asia. In it, he identified Taiwan's vital strategic role and called for the U.S. to provide military aid to Chiang Kai-shek and send air and sea forces to defend Taiwan. On June the 27th, President Truman released a statement by referring to the undetermined status of Taiwan. It provided grounds for interfering in the Taiwan question. In these circumstances, the occupation of Formosa by communist forces would be a direct threat to the security of the Pacific area and to United States forces performing their lawful and necessary functions in that area. Accordingly, I have ordered the Seventh Fleet to prevent any attack on Formosa. As a corollary of this action, I am calling upon the Chinese government on Formosa to cease all air and sea operations against the mainland. The Seventh Fleet will see that this is done. The determination of the future status of Formosa must await the restoration of security in the Pacific, a peace settlement with Japan, or consideration by the United Nations. This statement directly violated the Kailua Statement and the Bosnian Statement. These two international documents are very clear. That Taiwan is the land of the Chinese Empire. It must be given to China. 而且呢，一九四一九四五年十月二十五日，台湾啊正式交还了中国。美国政府抛出台湾地位未得论，实际上就是为美国武装干涉中国人民解放军解放台湾，呃，制造借口。The about turn by the U.S. from Taiwan being outside of America's defensive perimeter to ordering its forces to prevent any attack on Taiwan. Had taken a matter of a few months. So, what was the reason for this rapid reversal? This time, China is no longer the old China, but the Communist Party leader. In this situation, the Chinese government defeated Taiwan, without respecting the U.S. interests. So, the U.S. threw out the Taiwan Deal Away Doctrine. So, the Taiwan Deal Away Doctrine is actually a concept of the United States and some Western countries. 就是在台湾问题上设置障碍、阻碍统一，是出于美国的战略利益，出于西方他的战略利益，但是本质上是一个违反国际法的所谓的概念，同样也是对世界人民反法西斗争的一种侮辱。The PLA was already deployed, ready to act. However, after serious consideration, the leaders of the CPC decided to postpone Taiwan's liberation. The presence of U.S. forces in the region removed Chiang Kai-shek's fear of being overthrown. To secure his position, he asked his guardian for further support. Not only did he seek help in defending Taiwan, he went further and even called for the reconquest of the mainland. 
The realignment eventually gave rise on December the 2nd, 1954, to the Sino-American Mutual Defense Treaty between the KMT authorities and the U.S. government. This agreement is unlawful, unlawful, and damaged the sovereignty of China. For this reason, the Chinese government took a serious protest. On December the 5th, 1954, People's Daily ran an editorial under the headline, We Definitely Must Liberate Taiwan. Following the founding of the People's Republic of China, the PRC's lawful seat at the United Nations had been unlawfully occupied by the Chiang Kai-shek regime. This state of affairs remained unchanged for 22 years until October the 25th, 1971, when the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 2758 recognized the PRC as the sole legitimate representative of China to the United Nations. Adopt. The PRC also became one of the five permanent members of the Security Council. The representatives of the Chiang Kai-shek regime were expelled from the seat it had unlawfully held at the United Nations, as well as from all its associated organizations. 二七五八号决议应该是国际正义的一种体现，它是联合国的一次集体的国际行动，我把它也称之为一次集体的国际法行动。二七五八号决议的意义非常大啊，那么它意味着中国在国际上的这个外交承认啊，最终呃能够得以实现啊，那么这就解决了中国政府啊在国际上的合法性的这样一个大的问题。In the two decades prior to the restoration of the PRC's seat at the United Nations, China and the United States had maintained no diplomatic relations. That changed in 1972. This is Dr. Henry Kissinger, President Nixon's national security advisor. On February 21st, 1972, President Richard Nixon landed in Beijing and shook hands with Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai. China and the U.S. had officially started breaking the ice. When our hands met, one era ended and another began. 周恩来总理和尼克松在首都机场的握手，两个大国重新走到一起，开始了对话和恢复外交的这样一个路径。所以说是破了严冰，然后开始走向了一个中美关系新的征程。The reason this was called icebreaking when the president did this was because it really changed the relationship that had been established. Um, after World War II, when the Communist Party uh, was now in control of China. And I think that the president's willingness to open the doors and make a difference, I think that was a very visionary statement. This historic moment would change the world. On February the 27th, 1972, Premier Zhou and President Nixon signed the joint communique of the People's Republic of China and the United States of America, also known as the Shanghai Communique. During the negotiation, the only point on which the two sides had been deadlocked was the Taiwan question. In the history of Taiwan, there a huge the after several rounds of tough negotiations, the two sides reached agreement on addressing the sticking point. The U.S. declared that the United States acknowledges 
that all Chinese on either side of the Taiwan Strait maintain there is but one China and that Taiwan is a part of China. The United States government does not challenge that position. It affirms the ultimate objective of the withdrawal of U.S. forces and military installations from Taiwan. In his memoir, White House Hughes, Henry Kissinger states that he himself proposed the wording of the U.S. declaration. It brought together two previously hostile nations. The Shanghai communique was probably unique in its success in guiding relations between two great nations for seven years without ever a dispute over its meaning until it was superseded by diplomatic relations in 1979. Throughout the negotiations of the Shanghai communique, there was disagreement on the issue of the One China Principle. Eventually, the two sides agreed to disagree. They were both quite seasoned in their trade and stuck to their principles while striving to achieve something acceptable to both. Shanghai Communication However, areas of disagreement remained, even after the signing of the Shanghai communique. Still, the melting of the ice seemed irreversible. Finally, on December the 16th, 1978, a joint communique on the establishment of diplomatic relations between the PRC and the U.S. was issued. The United States of America recognizes the government of the People's Republic of China as the sole legal government of China. Within this context, the people of the United States will maintain cultural, commercial, and other unofficial relations with the people of Taiwan. And the government of the United States of America acknowledges the Chinese position that there is but one China, and Taiwan is part of China. Compared to the Shanghai communique, the joint communique was more explicit regarding the one China principle. It stated that the U.S. must sever diplomatic relations with Taiwan, abrogate the mutual defense treaty, and withdraw its military forces from the island. 美国在一个中国原则上呢，又往前迈出了实质性的一步，因为我们解决台湾问题最大的外部障碍是来自于美国的。那么，中美建交就意味着这样一种障碍在一定程度上减轻了。Most important words that the United States acknowledged that the Chinese people consider Taiwan a part of China and that there was only one China and that we would not challenge that proposition. At the same time, Chairman Mao made it clear that the Taiwan problem might require a long period for a final resolution. By the late 1970s, the new climate of peaceful relations, coupled with the adoption of the reform and opening up policy, was propelling China to center stage in the world arena. After the establishment of China-U.S. diplomatic relations, the Taiwan question and the peaceful reunification of China were again placed on the agenda. In December 1978, the third plenary session of the 11th CPC Central Committee, proposed replacing the phrase liberation of Taiwan with Taiwan returns to China and completes the great cause of Chinese reunification. On New Year's Day, 1979, the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, in a message to compatriots in Taiwan, outlined a general policy for China's peaceful reunification and announced the cessation of the bombardment of Keenmen.
。在一九七九年呢，元旦，中美正式建交，中国人大发表了告台湾同胞书。那么徐向前国防部长呢，就宣布呢，停止炮击，这样使得整个的国际形势和台海形势就缓和下来。However, just three months later, the United States Congress passed the new law. 与台湾关系法是什么法？是美国的国内法。台湾问题是什么？它是中国的内政问题。你美国一个国内法，你凭什么去管中国的内政问题呢？最重要的问题之一是，台湾关系法里边对台湾是有军事承诺的。那么，这个军事承诺。我们最熟悉的是对台军售了。The U.S. must sever diplomatic relations with Taiwan. The U.S. must abrogate its mutual defense treaty with Taiwan. U.S. forces must withdraw from Taiwan. In establishing diplomatic relations with China, the United States had committed itself to three key principles. Two were the removal of its military presence from Taiwan, and the abrogation of the mutual defense treaty. But the most critical issue. Was that of arms sales to Taiwan? America accepted the Trilateral Treaty of Three Rivers, but in the course of the treaty, the United States created the Taiwan Relations Act. And this law requires that the United States continue to sell arms to Taiwan. It clearly violates the Trilateral Treaty of Three Rivers. Deng Xiaoping, China's paramount leader, made clear the Chinese government's position. On numerous occasions, when he met U.S. officials, in a meeting with a delegation from the U.S. Senate Committee on Foreign Relations on April the 19th, 1979, he stated, "China was very frustrated by the Taiwan Relations Act because it denied the One China principle in nature." Subsequently, when negotiations on the third joint communique began in June 1981, the core issue. Was U.S. arms sales to Taiwan? Deng Xiaoping has often stressed that the core issue is this law. This law exists for a day, and the relationship between the two countries exists for a day. I personally think that arms sales to Taiwan tend to be very, very political. So the Taiwan Relief Act, as I said, mostly in response to a very strong right-wing Republican move at the time, caused uh, the arms sales to Taiwan to begin. And that, of course, has been a thorn in the side of the Chinese for all of the years since. They're political in the United States because it's popular for uh, Democrats and Republicans to sell arms to Taiwan because that's good for business in their states. It's good for the economy of the United States, etc. America, in this issue, has always not let go, so the negotiations are very difficult. It has been a long time for a year and a half. Of course, we can't let go. 这是原则问题。一九八二年五月，就派布什访华来探底，邓小平见了他了，向他很严肃地指出，美国向台湾卖武器问题是一个潜伏的危机。如果两国关系中的这个疙瘩能够揭开，将对全球战略很有利。美方要承诺，在一定时间内逐步减少，直至完全终止向台湾出售武器。The U.S. responded just over two months later. In a letter from Reagan to Deng Xiaoping, he said that the U.S. must agree to a clear limit on sales of arms to Taiwan. But he said that the U.S. must not seek a long-term relationship with Taiwan. The U.S. must have a clear limit on sales of arms to Taiwan. But he said that the U.S. must not seek a long-term relationship with Taiwan. This led to further prolonged tough negotiations. Finally, on August the 15th, 1982. The two sides reached agreement. Two days later, they signed the August 17th communique. The United States stated that it does not seek to carry out a long-term policy of arms sales to Taiwan, that its arms sales to Taiwan will not exceed, either in qualitative or in quantitative terms, 
the level of those supplied in recent years since the establishment of diplomatic relations between the United States and China, and that it intends to reduce gradually its sales of arms to Taiwan, leading over a period of time to a final resolution. From the Shanghai Communique in 1972 to the China-U.S. Joint Communique on the establishment of diplomatic relations in 1978 and the August 17th Communique of 1982, it had taken a decade and hundreds of rounds of negotiations to build the three beacons by which future China-U.S. relations would navigate. Together, they created a political foundation of which the China-U.S. relationship could develop. But did the U.S., through its actions, reflect its commitment to the One China Principle and a peaceful resolution? Ziang 那么，这个就反映了美国真实的态度嘛。这个些承诺呢，显然是背离了巴尔齐公报的基本精神。它表明美国在台湾问题上始终是说一套做一套。However, the U.S.'s continued signaling of its support for Taiwan did not prevent the development of cross-strait exchanges. The Chinese government's resolute advocacy of the basic principles of peaceful reunification and one China, two systems, serve to ease cross-strait tensions. The Association of Relations Across the Taiwan Straits, or ARATS, and the Straits Exchange Foundation, CEF, were established. And in November 1992, they agreed to the statement that both sides of the Taiwan Strait adhere to the one China principle this has become known as the 1992 consensus. The the United States should allow it to become an autonomous part of China, which could have its own system, one nation, two systems, peacefully. I think it would be the best thing for the Taiwanese. I suggested that one of the strategic things for the next 20 years is to try to find a way for one nation, two systems, peacefully. So I believe the diplomacy of the United States should be set to do that and not to be uh, setting up for the next war or the next conflict. Based on the 1992 consensus, another milestone was established for the peaceful development of cross-strait relations. From April the 27th to the 29th, 1993, Ku Chen Fu, chairman of CEF, and Wang Dao Han, the head of ARATS, met in Singapore. They signed four agreements on stepping up cooperation in fields including the economy, science and technology, and culture between the mainland and Taiwan. The Wang Ku talks were the first official contact between senior officials from the mainland and Taiwan after a long period of separation. I think the most important is that 他首先明确了一个中国的原则 
同样也明确了发展方向，就是追求统一。更重要的还有一方面，尽管两岸之间现在还有我们的分歧，但是在解决两岸关系上，两岸中国人用自己的智慧来解决了这样的问题。In response to the rapid growth in economic and trade cooperation across the Strait, the United States once again adjusted its strategic engagement with China. Events in Europe in 1989 and the breakup of the Soviet Union also had a major impact on U.S. foreign policy. 1991年苏联解体以后，美国成为世界上唯一的超级大国。这样子，他对借助中国的需求下降，认为中国对美国的重要呃这个这个地位下降，他就违背自己在中美建造中对中国的承诺。Shortly after the breakup of the Soviet Union, the U.S. announced the sale of F-16 Fighting Falcon jets to Taiwan. This was the largest arms sale by the United States to the island after it established diplomatic relations with China. The commitments in the August 17th communique were still fresh, yet U.S. arms sales to Taiwan were increasing rather than the opposite. 一九九二年，布什为竞选连任，宣布向台湾出售价值六十亿美元、一百五十架 F-16 战机。巴西公报很清楚啊，要在数量和质量上逐年递减。你一下来了一百五十架 F-16， 那么。巴西公报何在？巴西公报的承诺精神何在？啊，美国的国际信誉何在 ？Even before the issue of the 150 F-16 fighters could be addressed, another incident occurred, which added fuel to the fire. On May the 22nd, 1995, the U.S. government announced that Li Tung Wei would be permitted to pay a private visit to the United States in the capacity of an alumnus. Thus, a 17-year ban on visits by Taiwan's leaders to the United States was broken. 尽管李美国一再解释李登辉访美是私人性质的，但是呢，他为李登辉鼓吹“两个中国，一中一台”提供了舞台，助长了国际反华势力和岛内台独势力的嚣张气焰，直接引发了台海地区的这种紧张对立。一九七九年。中美建交以后就没有台湾当局的领导人和就是高级官员呐、啊、到美国去，李登辉他做到了，美国违背对我们承诺。李登辉 so-called private visit to the United States included a number of blatantly separatist events, promoting Taiwan independence and the breakup of China. 李登辉访美。是造成一九九五年、一九九六年台海危机的直接的原因。The bad faith on the part of the U.S. and Li's secessionist activities left China with no choice other than to respond strongly in defense of its sovereignty. In July 1995 and March 1996, it conducted two major live missile firing exercises in a demonstration against Taiwan independence. In Taiwan's secession from China, the second Wang Hu talks were also postponed. 美国允许李登辉访美，导致台海局势的紧张。那一个呢，就是中国大陆呢在台湾海峡举行了军事演习；第二呢，就是中国政府召回了驻美大使，是吧？那么第三呢，就是中美两国的军舰啊，第一次，或者说在。中美关系缓和以后，第一次在海上发生军事对峙的这样一个现象，啊，那么最终呢，这这次这个访问呢，对中美关系还是呃的负面影响还是蛮大的。China fought back on all fronts: political, military, diplomatic, and public opinion. The Clinton administration was forced to reel in its misguided China policy. 美国克林顿政府当时做出了一个对台三不支持的承诺：不支持台湾独立，不支持两个中国一中一台，不支持台湾加入主权国家组成的国际组织。那这样就指联合国嘛。后来，一九九八年克林顿到中国来访问
到上海去的时候，他当着在上海图书馆当着听众的面，自己讲了这个对台三不承诺。Unfortunately, even as these commitments were being made, the U.S. was sending signals to Taiwan that suggested rather different intentions. On July the 9th, 1999, Taiwan leader Li Tonghui, with U.S. support, declared his two states theory. Once again, the Chinese government responded. From the U.S.-China military history, the U.S. has to fight the United States. The choice of the U.S. is the U.S. side. The U.S. side is the U.S. side. The U.S. side is the U.S. side. The U.S. side is the U.S. side. 啊，可以说是空前的这个表态啊，或者动作。On April the 24th, 2001, President George W. Bush announced a massive arms sale to Taiwan. The move came after he had labeled China as a strategic competitor. The following day, he stated that the United States would defend Taiwan with whatever it took to help Taiwan defend themselves. 他在接受记者采访的时候，公开表示：“啊，这个如果两岸生战，美军将协防台湾。”这是意味着什么？这意味着他放弃了美国在中美建交以后长期奉行的在这个问题上的所谓模糊政策，转而采取清晰政策。这是一个标志性的事件。Soon after the reversal of its Taiwan policy, the U.S. came under attack. The September 11th attacks shocked the United States. Under both domestic and international pressure, the Bush administration was obliged to abruptly modify its Taiwan policy. The separatist Democratic Progressive Party had come to power in Taiwan in May 2000. Its leader, Chen Shui-bian, invented a new phrase, one country on each side and engineered a highly confrontational period in cross-strait relations. Chen seemed unaware of the dramatic change in the U.S. attitude following the September 11th attacks. The 9-11 incident, the U.S. focused its strategy on the main attention to the war. So, the government, the government, gave a strong support and support. 为中美关关系的继续改善，创造了一个有利的契机。But even as it sought to improve relations with China, the U.S. continued its arms sales to Taiwan. During his eight-year presidency, George W. Bush authorized six arms sales to Taiwan, worth a total of 15.6 billion dollars. He also established a three-level strategic and operational dialogue platform with Taiwan. And open a defense hotline with the island. Besides regular visits by Taiwan's defense officials, further institutionalized military cooperation between the two sides. 实际上呢，这就是他的反华啊，他的恶华，他的对华战略竞争体系的这样一种这个战略手段的运用。他是说一套做一套的，台前一套背后一套的。By the start of the 21st century. China's economy had entered a period of sustained strong growth. The GDP gap between China and the United States was narrowing. China's had become the world's second largest economy after the United States. By this time, the U.S. was openly practicing a policy of treating China as a strategic competitor. 随着中国的崛起啊，以前这个美国不觉得这是一个太大的问题，因为中国弱嘛。那么现在呢，中国强大了，对吧？中国的意识形态跟它的不一样，这是呃，他重视中国啊，呃，甚至于这是他采取这个呃所谓战略竞争的这样一个呃对抗性的政策的一个非常重要的一个方面。Republican Donald Trump soon after winning the White House. Took up the policy of strategic competition with China. At the end of 2017 and the beginning of 2018, his administration issued three national security strategy reports. They accused China of being a revisionist country, labeled China as a major strategic competitor, and declared a whole-of-government approach to strategically competing with China.
最严重的就是特朗普时期呢，美国的国会通过了很多涉台法案和涉台条款，基本上就是推翻了美国政府当时对中国的承诺。China, by contrast, has never changed its attitude to the Taiwan question. On January the second, 2019, Chinese President Xi Jinping. Gave a speech at a meeting to mark the 40th anniversary of the publication of the message to compatriots in Taiwan. In it, he reiterated the general policy of striving for the peaceful reunification of China, and put forward a series of policies and measures for improving cross-strait relations and promoting peaceful reunification. Taiwan problem is China's internal politics. It is about China's core interests and China's people's connection. 不容任何外来干涉。Joe Biden, since becoming president, has repeatedly affirmed the U.S. commitment to the One China policy and its opposition to Taiwan independence. His actions, however, have told a different story. On March the 3rd, 2021, the Biden administration released a document called Interim National Security Strategic Guidance. In it. As well as in Anthony Blinken's first speech as Secretary of State, China was identified as the only country with the economic, diplomatic, military, and technological power to seriously challenge the stable and open international system. Obama, Trump, Biden, their this dialogue policy and their policy with Taiwan have their unique place. It is to hold Taiwan back. 向台湾提供所谓安全保护，其中呢，很大的一个表现就是对台军售。中美建交之后，美国出于维护自身的利益，始终在台湾问题上小动作不断，始终是说一套做一套，不断的破坏、违背自己做出的承诺。Nothing can sever the inherent ties between people who share the same ancestry and blood. On March the 27th, 2023, former Taiwan leader Ma Ying-jeou arrived in Shanghai, becoming the first former Taiwan leader to visit the Chinese mainland. On April the 1st, Ma traveled to his parents' place of origin in Xiangtan, Hunan province, where he made offerings to Ma Lian, his grandfather. On hearing a warm welcome home from his fellow countrymen, Ma Sam, replying in the local dialect, he said, <laughs> To return home is a wish shared by all the Taiwan compatriots. This stella at the mausoleum of the Yellow Emperor in Shanxi province stands as witness to this 60-year-old desire. An inscription infused with sadness and hope, written by someone before their departure from the mainland, reads, May there be no more broken countries and divided families. 台湾问题是中国核心利益的核心，是中美关系基础中的基础，是第一条不可突破的红线。实际上就是要强调，维护台湾是中国领土一部分的地位不被改变，呃，维护国家主权与领土完整是中国的核心利益。